This week I'll show you how to mount prints on foam core. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have a question from Rick right here in Phoenix, Arizona. Rick asks, can you show me an inexpensive way to mount prints to maybe foam core or cardboard backings? Well, that's a great question, Rick. In fact, lots of people have been asking how to mount uh, prints for display. Maybe they want to frame them, but a lot of people just want to hang them on the wall without a frame. And uh, when you send that out to uh, a lot of art supply stores, framing stores, it's pretty expensive. Um, but I actually did a bunch of these today. And so here's a 13 by 19. You can see this is a print on a foam core back. Uh, backing it's very nice and um, sturdy and so you can just mount that on the wall uh, or put it inside a frame it works really well um, and there's all kinds of sizes so I did this large uh, monkey here you can see that we've got I did this one for a client this is just a beauty shot that's mounted up that's a really large print um, I wanted to print this one up and mount it this is one you might recognize from a shoot I did for pocket wizard uh, uh, earlier this year and then also a couple shots from India so there is my tiger. And so uh, this works with uh, four by six prints all the way up to these really large two by three foot prints. And uh, it's very simple. And so what you need is a few art supplies and uh, a nice specific razor for cutting things. And then it's pretty easy to do that. So let's hop over into the studio and start mounting our prints. Okay, well the end result, the thing we're going for is a mounted print that looks something like this. So you have your print mounted exactly on a foam board backing, just like that with the perfectly cut straight edges. Now, uh, we're gonna do this using some very affordable tools. I'm gonna walk you through these really quickly so you know what you need to have, and then when we're putting this all together, we'll tell you why. So to mount everything, we need some uh, spray mount. So we're using Scott Super 77, and to make sure that doesn't get on our hands, some gloves. You're gonna need a straight cutter. So here's a straight cutter and extra blades. Those are very important. And if you're thinking you can use a razor blade like this, it won't work, and we'll show you why in a little bit. You're also going to need a square or some kind of straight edge that's metal. Don't get wood or plastic, you need metal. Um, you can use a larger one like this if you have it, that'll help you with larger cuts. And then you're also gonna need some mat board, something that you can uh, use to protect the print and whatever you're cutting on, and a large work surface. Now in addition to that, you're also gonna need some foam board. And so I have some foam board right over here. Now this we bought in a very large box of, I think we have 25 in here. These are four by eight sheets, but you don't need four by eight sheets. You can get smaller sheets, maybe two by three feet or even smaller. You can get these at most art supply stores and even some sign companies have these where they'll just deliver them straight to your house or studio. Now the other thing that we're gonna need is some place to spray and get all really dirty. So the spray mount stuff gets everywhere. So we're, uh, we just hung this uh, seamless white up here. It's at the end of the roll. It's all torn up and we're not using it. If we didn't have that, maybe a roll of uh, uh, plastic like painters use. And the other thing you need is some help. And so we actually have Kelsey and Michael. They're gonna help us out here. And so when you're uh, spraying this stuff, Hold on to that, Kelsey, with that hand. Um, this really, the spray mount stuff goes everywhere. And so if you have two helpers, they can hold it way out like that. And so as you're spraying, it's just getting on their hands and not all over their bodies. And they're gonna be wearing gloves. And so that will help out as well. So now that you know what you need, let me tell you how to use all of this stuff. All right, to start out with, I have a piece of, uh, actually a scrap piece of four by eight uh, foam board that we already took a chunk off of. I'm gonna cut the next piece of this. Now, I just need to make this a little bit larger, actually a little significantly larger than the print. And the reason for that is as you're pulling this, you need to have enough room for a uh, straight edge to lay flat and the blade. So it needs to be at least the width of your straight edge. And then I would also give yourself a little bit more leeway because when you're putting this on there, uh, sometimes you don't get it exactly where you think. So we're gonna fudge this a little bit and put it in there about three inches in. And then on the other side, I'm gonna measure this. And so I wanna cut this board uh, a little bit wider. So about right here. Now this doesn't have to be a super accurate cut. I can just slice this about right there. So that looks about good. I'm just gonna take my razor blade here and I'll make this, try to make it a little bit square. Something like that. And then I'll just use that as a reference point. And I'll slice this, just like that. I'm gonna go on the other side and slice the other side, and then we'll be ready to start mounting this.
All right, we're gonna uh, now spray this. Uh, and Matt, our cameraman, is way back there because when I start spraying this, this just has like this cloud of uh, spray mount. So it gets all over your hands. We don't want it on the camera. So that's why Matt's a little bit ways away. But I'm gonna start spraying about right here, spray down, and then we're gonna turn this upside down. That way I'm not spraying Kelsey and Michael's arms. It's really important to make sure you get the edges and get a nice, even coat. So this is all shaken up. I'm wearing a glove because this also will get all over my hands. And that way I can take this off when we actually have to use, uh, handle the uh, print. So here we go, guys. Now, once you flip it over, they're gonna have gloves or uh, glue all over their hands. So it's really important that your helpers don't start uh, manhandling the picture. It's gonna get spray mount all over it. So If you just bring that right over here, I'm going to take my glove off because it's got glue all over it. Okay, I've got this side. Hang on to that side, Michael. Michael's going to grab this side just like that. And we have to pop this so it's upside down like that. I'm going to bring this right over and very, very slowly and let that go down. Okay, Michael, go ahead and let it down and let go. And notice, this is not square. We knew that, that's why we had a bunch of extra room around that. Now the next thing we need to do is to uh, make sure that this is laid flat. Now I'm using a lens cleaning cloth, so this is a, a really nice clean cloth and I can go from the middle and brush out and this is gonna make sure that there's no bubbles and using this cloth is gonna make sure that I don't have any scratches on my print. I'm doing this very gently, so we don't wanna push really, really hard because it might scratch. So I'm just gonna Make sure there's no bubbles there. Push this out. And you've got to take your time with this. After you get it down, make sure that you get all the edges nice and firm. And we're just going to look and make sure everything's down like it should be. All right, I'm going to make sure this is perfect, and then we'll start our cut. Okay, now let me show you how to cut this. Now again, I'm using this straight cutter, this Logan straight cutter. Now the reason for that, if I used a normal uh, razor, that wouldn't be an actual 90 degree angle. It would sort of be in or out. So this makes sure that things stay straight. And I need to do a couple things. The first thing is make sure the blade is as far out as it will go uh, to make sure it cuts through this. And we're using uh, 3 16 of an inch uh, foam board. And so that'll make sure this cuts through that. If the blade gets any, uh, just sort of drags at all, replace it. It's very important to have a very, very sharp blade, and so that's why we have these on standby. And I'm replacing these usually after I cut one, maybe two of these, I'm replacing this. So I'll use one side, flip the other side, use that, and then I'll throw the blade away and start again. Now to get a perfect cut, it's actually a lot easier than it looks. So what you need is a straight edge, and that straight edge needs to go exactly against the picture. Now the picture here, actually has a lip on it and so when you move this over you can feel it hit and once we get that then you hold this down this blade is going to go right next to that now if I cut this like this well this would scratch this up pretty significantly and so I'm going to use some just um, some mat board as a backing board and that will protect the print and it'll allow this to cut between there so let me line this up now one of the things that's really important to do is as you're cutting this is the most important thing, this straight edge. You need to make sure it does not move. And so you put pressure on the straight edge and then pull that back and just keep moving back as you're cutting. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on the cutting part. You need to make sure you put pressure on the straight part to make sure it doesn't move. Because if it moves, your cut's going to move. Watch this. There's the print. There is what we cut off. And sometimes it comes like that because the blade isn't quite long enough. And so if that happens, and this is very, very normal, all you have to do is just take this and very, very lightly just cut the last little teeny piece. Okay, well there's our first cut. Now sometimes you'll have little hangers on at the very, very bottom if you have a blade that's not brand new. Um, you won't cut all the way through and so you can come to the other side 
and just very, very delicately trim that up. This is going to keep that square. And so what we need to do next is do the other three sides and then we will have our print all mounted and cut. All right, we're going to make our first long cut. It works the exact same way. I'm going to put this so it's uh, exactly mounted on there. And then as I'm cutting, I'm going to move this down along the way. So just take your time with this and get the cut right so that it's perfect. our final mounted print and that is ready for framing or hanging on a wall just like it is and look at that we did it all by ourselves so what we're gonna do is we're gonna really quickly do a few more and then we'll be done Well, as you can see, if you have a little patience, you can do this yourself and it's very, very rewarding. Now, one of the things I can't stress enough is make sure you have sharp razor blades because if you don't, you're really gonna be frustrated. It seems like a very simple thing, but every single time I try to take that shortcut of not putting in a new razor blade, disaster happens. So keep those blades sharp and new and almost every single print we replace those. Well, that's all there is this week. Remember, if you have questions for me about photography, photography gear, or post-production stuff, make sure you send those questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. <laughs> Michael's got problems wearing gloves. <laughs> Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.